Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are there are five things that should happen in any church and in any ministry that wants to effectively communicate the life of Christ. Number one is that every time believers come, there should be, believers should have encounters. Everyone say encounters. It's important. An encounter is an experience that makes a thing or a person real. The substance of the reality of a person or a thing crystallized in your spirit. If it is true that God is real, if it is true that his ways are true, then when you come and sit under this anointing and under this ministry, you should have encounters. The reality of the things that we talk about should be furnished in your spirit hallelujah number two transformation i am personally convinced that if you are in any platform that does not sustain the ability to transit your understanding and to produce superior versions of you by the communication of truth then um, you are wasting your time there. Respectfully but truthfully, you are wasting your time. Believers must be exposed to the truths that can transform them. I believe in excellence. This is a ministry that represents excellence as our core value. But above and beyond all of the paraphernalia, it is, it is important that the word of God comes with power and that the people are transformed not just informed but transformed are we together number three every gathering that will allow the fullness of christ to find expression must leave a provision for the holy spirit to manifest the multifaceted possibilities that are contained in the christ in miracles signs wonders supernatural solutions that's why we're here tonight it is true that there are people who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders but any platform at all that bears the name of Christ must have a provision there that allows the Holy Spirit to come in and allow the power of God to be visibly seen in the midst of his people now listen very carefully you've heard me say it in as much as miracles signs and wonders are not the ultimate motivation for our pursuing god we seek him because we love him we seek him because we desire his life however there is a provision in the economy of god that when the saints sacrifice that much he responds back to them hallelujah there are people here who have traveled um, for days there are people who have been here right from Monday some even Sunday just waiting for tonight it will be unfair that all you receive is just a theological exegesis of truth as important as that is there must be an opportunity where your challenges and your situations 
collide with the power of God culminating in miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. I can assure you that the challenges in your life only have a few minutes left to remain. That is for sure. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Praise the Lord. Number four. The fourth thing that you receive when you are gathered like this is impartation. Now let me explain to you the dimensions of the impartation that I talk about. Not just impartation from the man of God to you, but a distribution of graces. You see, every time we converge like this, it's not just a convergence of people listening to a man. It's a convergence of altars, alignments, dimensions. The man of God only leads that process. He's not the only dispenser. Are we together? That means that there are dimensions that may not be captured in my life, but are needed in your destiny. Are we together now? As the meeting is going on, the Holy Ghost begins to run across the congregation and finds men who have aligned to allow him place that dimension in them and he will pick from some of those graces and bring to you so not every impartation in a meeting comes directly from the man of god it's an uncomfortable truth most people will like to say it came from them but the truth is that it's not just a vertical distribution even across are we together yes there are people who are seated who have certain graces that are needed in our lives needed in our destinies and sometimes we men of god may not have aligned enough to host god that far god will not keep the people's expectation in jeopardy just because of the limitation of a man of god he will go out of his way to outsource a system of making sure that their desires are met this is the god that we serve are we together I think I shared with us a testimony um, some years ago, three, four years. I was at a PFN crusade in Kano, and then I'm prophesying to people and ministering by the Spirit. And then I called this woman out by the Spirit, about to prophesy to her. And then God reveals something spectacular. Very ordinary woman, doesn't have any structured ministry, but the woman told me she's an intercessor, that she completes her bible every i think two weeks or so every two weeks without fail ah i stopped prophesying there and said madam like john the baptist i don't know who who should untie whose shoe and she was humble ready to come and receive from the man of god and i'm saying this dimension is strange you can finish a book you can finish francine rivers volumes you can even finish a dictionary in one day but this Bible, when you try to read the Bible, that's when you will know the Bible is powerful. You can't read the Bible just like that, like a storybook. You try it. Ancient words, danced with strange power and strange attacks. Praise the Lord. And so... I, I told the woman humorously, I said, I think that I desire prayer from her to pray for me for the grace to finish your Bible every 15 days. Ah, if I do that for one year, I would, I would be quoting it. In fact, I would not even, I would just carry the Bible so you don't think I'm a herbalist. But the real quotation will come from my head. Amen. And then, of course, number five, an opportunity for fellowship. The Bible says in one, Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. He says it's like the oil that comes from Aaron's head down to his beard, his skirt, and so on and so forth. He said, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, I submit to you that all five of these possibilities are structurally resident within this place. It is true. And tonight, among the many things, we choose number three, the power of God. We intend to see God move 
as a mighty, mighty God. Psalm 126. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, not if, when, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he says, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And they said they among the hidden, there is a kind of testimony that God will give you. You will not be the one to testify. It says the hidden said the Lord. They are hiddenistic. Yet, they acknowledge the source of that miracle. That although we do not believe in the God of heaven, but this one cannot be by a man. The Lord had done great things for them. Next verse. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Next verse. Turn again our captivity. It's amazing. The Bible says, when the Lord turned, keep that scripture there. When the Lord turned again the captivity of where? It is not unusual to have captivity even though you are Zion. It didn't say the captivity of unbelievers. The captivity, Zion. It says, turn again our captivity, O Lord, like the streams of the Negev or the south. Just leave it at verse 4. Turn again our captivity. Turn away the situation in our family that has brought reproach to the name of the Lord. Turn again the, the, the situation that makes it look as if Jesus is not Lord. Let me tell you this. Miracles are messages. I really believe in miracles. Miracles are messages. And I've explained it here, but for tonight, I will still do it again. Um, please come, Binga. Now, look up, please. This is, this is, um, Sean, you stand here. Come. Now, watch this. The Bible lets us know that man was created to be the zenith of God's creation. Are we together? The apex of his creativity was demonstrated in the making of man. And so the psalmist would say, well, what is man that thou art mindful of? nor the son of man that thou visitest him. Are we together? And he set this man, this is man now, above every creation, the cattle, the fish, and every other thing. He made man the head of his creation. Now, that means that every other thing that happens on earth is with respect to man. Are we together? The activities and the program of God on earth is with respect to man. The oppression of Satan is also with respect to man. That means that if men suddenly die, if the 7.2 billion people on earth suddenly fall asleep and die, Satan and demons will have absolutely nothing to do. Praise the Lord. Kill all the men in the world. Leave the banks open. Leave the markets open. Leave all the safes open. Everything is only useful. Because of this entity called man. Are we together? Without man, there is no value to anything. Leave all the real estate and kill man. There will be no value again. Leave all the fish in the sea. And all the business moguls will go down when there is no man. Everything has value on earth because of man. Understand my teaching? Are we together? Now, it is the technology of Satan to be interested in whatever God is interested in. Whether or not he understands why. The moment he finds God's attention, focus on a person or a thing, he will want to come and find out why. Are we together? Now, this is man. This is God. This is Satan and all of his cohorts. Now, watch this, please. Man is also like a painter's um, what they call it the canvas of a painter everything that happens to a man is a letter from God to man 
or through man to creation that includes satan are we together and it's also a letter from satan through man to god so when this man's family goes through all kinds of oppression barrenness tragedies and all sorts of demonic things it's not about barrenness listen it's not about poverty satan is not interested in those things he is using them like a painter's brush to write a letter and the letter is saying if you claim god is faithful then let me use his highest creation to discredit him are we together now so creation can look at man and read the letter satan wrote to god through man and then you will find people in that family saying look if god is alive where is he that we are going through these kinds of things the objective of the oppression is now being achieved are we together and then at miracle services like this god replies watch this so a situation this guy has been in bondage for 10 years that's a letter that was written from satan through all his family members and say creation bear witness if it is true that he is good and there is no evil in him then what is this looking for in his creation it's not about the challenge it's about the statement and the message on it are we together so if in one minute like it will soon happen an oppression that has lingered for decades just moves in one moment God, like Julius Berger, just replies and does a spectacular thing and then signs on it. Signed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord of the universe. Are we together now? Yes. So every challenge that you have, you must discern the message there. It's not about the unique challenge. It doesn't matter whether it comes as poverty. It doesn't matter whether it comes as delay. It doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever kind of retrogression. See it as a parcel. Send through you to God. I am mocking the highest of your creation as an attempt to discredit your supposed faithfulness. And then God continues to seek for men with whom he can reply Satan back. And when he finds a man and he finds a platform, he allows for meetings like this and then he starts writing Allah will turn your life around Allah will sit down It is true that for five years you didn't get a job now even if you get a job now you will still suffer because for that five years many things you are probably in debt and many other things have gone down so you don't just need a job you need God to do something in your life and in and through that job when you get a job with a triple promotion now it's not about the promotion if you just clap for the promotion, you did not discern the miracle. It's a message. I am a restorer of time. Are you getting it now? You've heard me say humorously that when a woman who has been pregnant for, who has been barren for say eight, nine, ten years, even if that woman puts to bed and intends as a couple to have four or five children they will have to add an extra 10 or 15 years to their life to space the children well but when god gives that woman triplets that is nine years of three three years spacing in nine months that's a letter from god to creation i'm still on the throne regardless i am still on the throne so many times God will allow Satan to just exhaust his pride on earth. And when he is done, God will say, are you done now? Let me show you that 
there is no such thing as yesterday and tomorrow in my economy I'm not just motivating you that he said when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion the captivity of Zion I saw you yesterday you were a beggar but I see you tomorrow you have experience there are two ways to climb a tower you use the ladder or you use a lift you will arrive the problem is you may die before you get to one place you will climb and by the third or fourth floor you are there but there is a technology hidden somewhere where you can stand and you are moving by the energy of that lift and within a minute you are there and with honor you can step out they were like them that dream lord i I thought I would have been grateful if you did it slowly. The fact that you are doing it, but that you chose to move this far. That when I started this year, my collective goal was to reach here. And in one month, you gave me five years goal. This is the God of heaven. If God answers you like a man, why will you praise him? God will never do things the way men do them. No. Listen, I am a man. And with all humility, it is within my power to be able to use influence or resources to just upgrade someone's life. If God upgrades you the same way I'm doing it, then it means we are colleagues. The jealousy of God makes him to be spectacular. There is a signature that only his hand can sign. So that you are, that's why he told Moses, say, listen, 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 Moses leave all of this don't mix me in the many gods in egypt i am that i am and i will have to do something that distinguishes me he does it so that no man will ever claim credit for it there are things that is difficult to say god did it you just say god did it because um you don't want to look like a stupid person you are in the midst of intelligent people and the obvious is to say god did it but there are really things that everybody knows that this one is God's doing. This is what God wants to do tonight. If all you get is a job, men can do that. You don't have to be a Christian to get jobs. You just need to understand the laws of life. But that there is something that God can do. Show me a man that restores time. Show me a man that restores time. When time is gone, it's gone, no. But not in God's economy. Time is like a chess. He can take it forward and backward. Listen. You see, Ba. I tell you why God does not hurry. For many years, he gives men speed. But God does not hurry. And you have to be God to understand why he does not hurry. It does not make sense to hurry when you have this kind of authority. You only hurry because of something that can overpower you. Are we together now? If I have a bank and I'm hurrying up and you say, Apostle, hurry up, five o'clock, they will lock the bank. I said, don't worry. So he said, see, I know, I saw the face of that man. He will lock the bank. It's my bank. So the time was only supposed to be for you. When any time I come, the bank opens. Listen, listen very carefully. So when you say, God, show up. Otherwise, men will say, God say, it doesn't make any difference. I've checked for the reasons why I should hurry and I didn't find it. There is nothing that can put me under pressure to hurry. I am God. Ah. He comes in his majesty and sometimes he allows the pride of men to just continue while they speak. God just comes and says, what did men say? And they will say that there is no rising in this family. That the first person built a house at 45 and God says if I use the man who is 30 years old they would think he went to school let me use the mama that does not see I would do something with her and she would dedicate her house in two months this is God for you God is not interested in any miracle that will not allow the message of his glory to be written on it there are times that when you bring challenges to God 
is an insult so he allows it to go deep enough to be worth his power you don't bring to him what men can solve you will confuse who solved it because while you were speaking to him you spoke to men too so that you don't mix the answer and just say ah. every time God wants to arise even the sorcerers will not see that day he will do something that makes everyone give up and then he will now say clear the way for me ah. this is God for you listen my prayer is that after this meeting eh, listen you not only will receive miracles but you begin to covet your life being a sign and a wonder don't just be a recipient of God's benevolence but that you are like a canvas when there are some paintings when you see artists draw you just ask what was in the mind of this let God reveal to you what his mind can do I don't like ordinary things in my life I like things in my life that come with a statement this is God and someone will look at you and not even know how to smile again he says this thing here eh? it has to be God he will just go back and say Lord I'm sorry for being foolish you see he has repented without your sermon your life was a sermon they limited God in the wilderness listen let me tell you this don't get used to pain don't get used to pain there is an ability from heaven that can crush the gates of darkness. I know we are human beings and many times when things become increasingly uncomfortable, we build a theology around them to say it should continue. But this night, roll away the stone and let the God of heaven come in and show you that with men it is impossible, but with God, all things, all things are possible. Every time I pray for the miracle service, I don't pray for too many things. I don't pray, God, heal the sick, cast out devils. No, that's not my prayer. Lord, let there be something. Sign a signature upon someone's life, upon someone's family. You know, I was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon. And while we're talking about this, my sister was speaking and said that, um, that it looks like this miracle service, God is visiting families, not just individuals. He just wants to move past individuals. Remember, I told you, you are not free when your family is not free. Let me tell you sincerely. He said, as for me and my house. If the, jo the brothers of Joseph all had dreams, nobody would kill anybody. It was because only one over how many had dreams. And the rest said, you are joking. You saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bow. But when everybody rises by the finger of God, then it is a testimony. I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family, but give God a few minutes tonight to answer them. God has an answer. My brothers and my sisters, the God we serve is not man. Don't get used to it. God is not a president of a ministry. God is not the CEO of a bank. God is not the CMD of a hospital. God is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone. No. He sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. It will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before. Come with your vessels increased and enlarged. Lord, I know you are stepping in. I know you are changing my life. It's June, but people have laughed at me. Where is the extraordinary fruitfulness? I'm still begging. I don't even have 250,000 to pay rent. My prayer life has gone down. Ha! This God of heaven. My brothers and my sisters, it doesn't take time. When God opens his mouth from heaven, anything plus anything plus God is the answer he says should be. Your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be. Your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be. I continue to pray and I say, Lord, let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders, but a sign and a wonder itself. If you are looking for a sermon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia 
and there is salmon is you are you are seeing a marvelous God listen by the grace of God within the time God has given us we will we will disprove the pride of men in this world all of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor God has sent us to disprove them that whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God Whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week? There is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men. Please don't get used to the natural course of things. There is an advantage. God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. That people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week. Because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday monday tuesday wednesday and there is no message no you are not a sign and a wonder you have what it takes to do signs and wonders but god wants you to be the sign yourself to be like that star that shines in the east that when men look at you they say what manner of god is this men whom the earth was not worthy of see there is nothing the devil can do about this no There is a kind of speed that God can bring to your life regardless of who loves you or who does not love you. It doesn't play any role. God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement. Let me tell you, fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement. You will look for their downfall wasting your time. They will just continue to rise held by the jealousy of God himself. Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and Forget your destiny. No. I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you. So that when we begin to minister, you don't just stand. Some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far. My brothers and sisters, what does God need to do in your life again? For you to believe that he is mighty. Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. 
if it is God that says it cannot be done I will not even try it because it's a waste of time but if it's man that says it cannot be done I say God what do you say huh. when Jesus came he said you say this in your law but this is what I say you say this in your law but this is what I say like he's speaking to someone they said this in your family but this is what I say he can veto anything and turn a man's life around hallelujah someone gave me a very humorous testimony I think it was yesterday they had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad and um, uh, you know I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something and they are just deprived that man for five years I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken no salary no benefits because some ammunitions were missing and they traced to to him imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years things went down and you know if, if he wins the case they will have to restore everything plus damages are we together and they kept manipulating manipulating and I think just yesterday I was told that was it yesterday or I think this week the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor I said you should start dancing in your household because whether the devil likes it or not everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you things never get missing they only leave you they are still on earth everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm it is only within a distance that is beyond your reach there is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true and let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die worry pastors collapse on stage i've told you that there is a technology that sends israel to egypt it's called hunger every time there is hunger israel must go to egypt to find bread genesis 42 please give it to us let's just read it i apologize the projection is not very clear but just see that scripture now everyone read if you can see it we're reading one and two. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse two. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet but lack of corn was making him mortgage his children go to egypt i'm a prophet but we're about to die and i hear that wherever there is corn that's where people go to look let's not lie to ourselves wherever there is corn 
that is where people go to including a prophet he had because the bible says the increase of the earth is for all and that even the king is fed from it when there is corn in egypt believers will have to go down there we need time to serve the lord we need time to bet the revival that he wants to bring we need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom but that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in egypt it's a cost to go down to egypt but if that is the only place that has corn then you will have to go down to eat and then there arose another pharaoh that knew not joseph and the people of god got into servitude and slavery don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter you just serve god like that according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness everyone say after me life, life. godliness life, life godliness there are things that pertain unto godliness your character your work with god your prayer life your spiritual development those are things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life your children's school fees your accommodation the well-being that any man who is unable to cater for his family according to scripture has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel so when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of god you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a pta letter and your eyes the letter is usually typed except where the money will be they write it with biro and the price is doubled you stand there wanting to kill your son why has the school fees been doubled and the child said they just gave me to give you and you look at it your salary is not increased nothing else is increased but the bills are rising the devil wants to send you to egypt a time will come what what you would not do yesterday you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain hunger can take men to egypt hallelujah a dear man of god called me i think two weeks or so i don't know him so much and from one of these nations and he called me and was lamenting he said apostle pray for me our ministry is under serious financial attack he said right now honestly the way things are we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills you know things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of new satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a part which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. No. I said, I said, I, 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 and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. 
if you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray there is no reason why that child will give you joy are we together anything that child does will annoy you and then help that child let him not take first or second or third you will almost kill the child there are real issues that we cannot laugh at real issues and this night God is determined to rise up and not only step in but turn things around John chapter 10 and verse 10 thank you John chapter 10 and verse 10 please it says the thief cometh not there is a name Satan is called and here he is called the thief are we together if someone knocks your gate and you say who is that he said the thief you don't need to ask him what tribe what gender you will call the police immediately and say there is a thief there is an armed robber in front of my house and Jesus is preaching here and he says the thief cometh not that means you will never see him around but for to steal and to kill and to destroy so everywhere you see stealing killing and destruction is a signature the thief Satan he comes into a joyful family are we together happy husband come my dear happy wife when the thief comes in between them he must scatter everything one flimsy excuse or the other he will come in between business partners and shred them when satan passes a place you know this is him he will leave his signature stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come he didn't say I have come I am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly lavishly I am come that he may have life I am come that he may have solutions I have come to show you that there is a way out of this I am come to show you that there are possibilities are we together now now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion the Bible says according as his divine power please give it to us that second first um, second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 please grace and peace verse 2 be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given us so what gives us in this kingdom his divine power never forget this it is not faith faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass the agency the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of god that's not a theology taught in the bible he never taught any of them in isolation his divine power every request on your list will be solved by his divine power now let me teach you this i've taught you again what is on you is what controls the results around you please never forget this the results around you do not fabricate themselves the results around you are mirrors they are a reflection of the kind the level the dimension of the grace that is upon you so I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open it just depends on the grace asking it to open everybody is a giver 
it depends on the grace that asks them to give someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody's really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is the anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you please listen to me his divine power there are doors that have refused to open the doors are not stubborn the doors are only obedient to the last instruction and since the anointing speaking to it is not that high the door will remain obedient to the last instruction the day a higher authority speaks that door will open i assure you please don't generalize challenges challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them this is a message of hope for you to hear challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them even the king could not solve the hunger problem of samaria here comes the prophet he did not come to solve the problem he said ah, okay i see that there is a situation everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet he said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if god will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it i believe in the power of god i've seen what the power of god can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the bible never said noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are walking on your own in this kingdom we don't walk with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for god it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ and tell everybody bye-bye return back with your challenge no i want you to believe god tonight and insist lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for god to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that god gave man is a fundamental right it's not for christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you 
choose life I said before you prosperity and poverty I said before you success and failure I said before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it I choose speed I choose increase I choose honor I choose dignity I choose open doors I choose open heavens it's a choice and if you're a family man here as for you and your house you can't choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house that the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight and that within the next one month things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you if you do not believe these things exist you are not a Christian a Christian is not just one who is born again a Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life hallelujah I'd like you to believe God don't say I've come for miracle service before you see let me tell you the truth my assignment as a man of God is not to invite you my assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now I'm only maintaining my spiritual level I'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know i have let me just still five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is one thousand naira. look at this and if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get results. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray.
Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah, say. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah. my life around turn my life around tonight turn my ministry around turn my family around is someone praying turn things around Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems. And deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I am not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight. Because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. three people the power of God is coming upon them right now a very strong anointing please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray and then we'll pray when you have them please bring them very quickly the Lord is already moving listen let me tell you the truth I want you to believe believe that God will step in and turn your life around hallelujah turn your life around from the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke. Just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit. Remember the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness. I want to pray now. I see fire in this place. This is what I'm saying. By the spirit of the... And listen. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ. Responsible for any challenge and any predicament. It must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. 
One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus, I cause every power, bring them out right now. Every oppression of darkness, it must go now. It must go now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah, I say. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm still praying. The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit. I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it. At the count of three again, you're going to shout that name. I see opening, opening doors that have been closed. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be open now. Every closed door. Be open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors over families. Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare. Be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three across the road. Online, be free now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing. I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let fire from heaven liberate that family right now one two three be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus we blot out handwritings we blot out handwritings bring them out i cause altars yokes of darkness ordinances Speaking against the people of God. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states the eastern states right now God is bringing deliverance the east Abia Anambra state Enugu state Epoi state I'm seeing an anointing right now rest on people within that state let there be liberty right now let there be liberty right now you belong to that state the power of God is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how God does it I'm seeing the map the east God is bringing liberty hallelujah the Lord is showing me the map again 
I'm seeing an arrow and I'm seeing it go to Benway, Benway State. Right now I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway, that anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release their destinies right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front. There are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference. I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now. Bring them out right now by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Things must change in your life. My friend, this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Can't wait. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny. Be free now. All those in front here, I decree. The power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies. Right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell. I command the restoration by the spirit of the living God. By the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, arrows, arrows. Arrows right now, right here. Arrows, arrows go now. Arrows are being removed out of people in the name of Jesus, Madam. Be free right now, be set free now. The Lord is setting someone free here, right now. Someone in this room, I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. 
the Lord asked me to come to overflow one I want to pray for you there is an anointing right now I stretch my hands fire from the front to the back everyone under any kind of yoke right now as I'm passing be free be free help them please out now release their destinies release their destinies now please help them whether you are an usher or not help them that yoke must let you go now that yoke must let you go now I'm passing this road right now once I pass you the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God release them now release their destinies now release their destinies now let that fire rest upon you right now everything that has refused to open be open now be open now be open now be open now close doors be open now be open now now listen overflow two i may not touch you but in the name of jesus i pass your role except god is not god if there is anything sitting on your destiny it must let you go right now be free be free I bring you the anointing of the holy ghost be free now open up your gates your gates gates be open destiny be open now be open in the name of jesus be open now in the name of jesus be open in the name of jesus be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road, just right there. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Karis Kobaru Katosh, help her please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just. I'm seeing fire right now and I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here God is saying it is over right now I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you're an usher or not please if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now I'm pointing my hands to her I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of Jesus Christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three, I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit be free now be free now bring them out i'm seeing all kinds of spirits I command every spirit that is not of the Christ release God's people right now at the count of three I'm seeing fire resting on people and I'm seeing a number 41 41 people at the count of three shout Jesus are you ready one two three shout Jesus right now be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost be free right now every door that has refused to open I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed. 
is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed. I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow 3, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here, but in the name of Jesus, I declare, move to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here. Overflow 3. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people. Step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I will pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three like Elijah. May that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium. Step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three, let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3, and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny 
I command at the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. The power of God is resting on someone here. There's an anointing coming on someone right here. In the name of Jesus. There's an anointing coming on someone here. And the Lord is saying it comes to an end. That family crisis comes to an end. The power of God is resting on someone by my left here. Right now receive that anointing. Let it go in Jesus' name. Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me, my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing what looks like smoke. Just this region where, I'm, where you are looking at me. Right now, there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them. Just this road right now. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity, four of you, by the Spirit of grace. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you. You will be mightily used by God. Where is that person? Spirit of the living God. The hand of God just near the gate here. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. A new dimension in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. May you step into that level in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend. Touch this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands over you. I command, I'm seeing chains all over your body. I command those chains to give way now. In the name of Jesus, release him now. Let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I cut those chains. I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe. Let me pray for those here. Please, all of you are here. I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence. I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people. There is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now. Five of you, right now. These spirits, my God, my God, I'm seeing something living right now. Release them now. Release, no matter how long, release them now. It is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the living God. You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have, seeing dead people, is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of the hope. In the... There is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now. I just...
please don't be carried away acting this thing i shunnedly to help people experience god i'm praying i don't know where that family is but now scattered in this congregation i stretch my hands let the anointing of the holy spirit family right now i'm seeing a family here none of you has a job none of you there are even a few graduates but nobody at all it's like the doors of jobs don't open right now you're going to sense fire come up your hands real physical fire and the lord is saying by that help them by that that embargo is broken lord i i declare right now let the anointing of the holy spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit please begin to pray in the spirit don't say you are not inside god can locate you from any direction god can locate you from any direction bring me this lady please in the name of jesus christ delay ends in your life i stretch my hands and i pray delay help her the lord is taking away witchcraft from this family i command that devil go now see it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside just release your faith in the name of jesus be free right now be free right now my friend the call of god is upon your life there is, that is coming upon you it's a healing anointing i stretch my hands may that grace begin to work effectually now step into that grace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now listen among all of you from here to here the grace for speed is coming on two people listen those two people will start running now please hold them hold them so they don't enjoy themselves that anointing right now all across two you can't control yourself hold them please whether you're an usher i release that grace speed two people strange speed god is ending delay right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is i don't know where they are but i stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of jesus christ name of jesus christ name of jesus christ an angel of the lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting god for the fruit of the womb who is that listen where where is she at home what of you come how long who has had three miscarriages three miscarriages go and tell her she will have a baby girl that the lord is giving her a baby girl in the name of jesus i pray for you both in the name of jesus let it come to an end right now let that captivity come to an end in the name of jesus there's someone here your family has a court court case who is that please court case don't make sure you don't tell us please they want to kill you because of what what did you do what did you do hold on i have to where are you from where is that i have to pray for you you have bad friends hold on let me talk to you eh? you have very bad friends bad friends you need to be delivered this is not even your whole life huh you know what i'm saying right you need to repent eh? listen when i make an altar call run and come because the real salvation is you it's not the issue of court case of this you you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray you hear what i'm saying 
God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, let me. When God locates us like this, is because He wants to help. Hey, there's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't don't let me just prophesy. I I my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no, we're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah? I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? But come. I'm seeing that down in Port Harcourt. Port, uh, yes, I Port Harcourt. You came from Port Harcourt. Go on. I'm going to pray. For, do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation up. Please, as you are standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside. You win. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout that will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church, you are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension of signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you. Help her. I caught spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. 
pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oppression leaves right now someone here there is a spirit that has oppressed your family it must go now I command that devil of darkness help her please that spirit must leave now in the name of Jesus please everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit God is visiting us right now one media person here there is an anointing resting on someone the Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God captivity coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God let it end now in the name of Jesus my friend I'm seeing what what looks like a towel on you and the Lord is wiping away infirmity in the name of Jesus infirmity let it go right now please make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God the spirit of death there is a family here that spirit must go now the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come Are you a man of God? Come, you too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer, is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I'm, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you does Amen. it make sense what i'm saying yes, sir. i want to pray for you well this boy has a great destiny forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened i want to pray for you the lord located you to bless you what's his name fortune fortune, fortune. Yes, i will pray for you mama where are you coming from i come from togo you came from togo yes just yesterday just yesterday yes what are you trusting god for oh my daughter in america she's one that sent me to you she has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that through me you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, 
that back pain huh? that back pain that you have you get up in the morning and there's severe back pain that back pain will leave you now that's number one number two the dead people you see in your dream huh? sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died but they are alive talking to you I need to pray for you and then number three God is going to visit your daughter tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough and in the name of Jesus be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit why are they here please you are a teacher did you apply for a job yes where because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one outside. No. Hold on. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? I'm seeing one child. Then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one. You have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. Yes, the, yes sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face. To make it look as if this is an evil woman and don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch in the name of jesus i tell you god gave you a good woman she's a good woman madam you're a good woman in the name of jesus let me pray for you sir please hold my hands in the name that is above all names i open up every closed door over your life and destiny i shift you to that realm of wealth in jesus name the person look up please the person who comes to molest you when you sleep it comes to an end now in the name of jesus every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever in the name of jesus god's ability god's ability is working in me is working in God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Is working in me. God's ability, God's ability. your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say Lord there must be an evidence an evidence I'm tired of bringing mockery to your name and misrepresenting you go ahead and pray he shall receive power power not stories power not stories power Hallelujah, please sit down fire is burning in this place I tell you Acts 
chapter 10 verse 38 please help us media i came to challenge you the way we are doing church and christianity we are about to disappoint god we need evidences not evidences just from preachers are we together i will never follow a god who cannot prove himself i'm not one of those people they like they say, just believe don't worry in his time no way no way no way before gideon accepted the assignment he asked questions before mary accepted she, she said how shall these things be because according to my knowledge a man and a woman will produce pregnancy but he said the power of the highest in other words there is another root in the spirit you have known that it's only a man and a woman you have known that you only wait for five years to get a job but there is another root the power of the highest shall overshadow you see i bring you another way there is not only one way of doing things the world has created their way but god has his way how god anointed jesus let me tell you what that means look at the extent to which he anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who was anointed this way jesus he was not anointed three days to the cross he would have had 33 years of a wasted experience and three days of impact he was anointed before how many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment he says as a result of that who went about doing what doing good an example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil that was not the only good he did he multiplied bread doing good by the anointing he forced money inside the mouth of a fish doing good by the anointing he multiplied bread and fish by the anointing he calmed the storm by the anointing he vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing he raised the dead by the anointing and the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good. You are going around trying to do good. Willing to do good. Meaning to do good. But good is not coming because good is not just a desire. There is an empowerment. Men are empowered to do good. I want to help the poor. There is an anointing that helps you to do good. Write this down. What is the anointing? Please participate and listen patiently and carefully. Those outside in any of the overflows, just pay attention. You may be standing, but listen. Number one. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man, upon any man, not a preacher. God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. Every military man has a uniform. The uniform is a seal of authorization. When the military man is in mufti, he has no rights to do certain things. But when he wears his uniform, his uniform and his badge is his seal of authorization. Are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs and diverse manifestations. Approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing 
is God's capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Write it down. Underline compel. Because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire. It takes power to change things. It takes power to change genotype from SS to AA. It takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell. It takes power to raise the dead. It takes power to prosper. Hallelujah. Are we together? It takes power to prosper. We all want to prosper, but we neglect the place of power. Many people bow to gods, bow to spirits, receive power from them. They sacrifice children, turn them upside down and drain their blood. And the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal. And whenever you see it, you must approve it. That's power. And yet many believers just move around and they ask you, why should you get this proposal? You say, I'm sincere. Welcome to the world where only mantles speak. Your long story and English will not do you much. When Moses went to Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, this is what the Lord said. Pharaoh said, nonsense. He said, my rod, continue the conversation. I don't have time for this rubbish. Janus and Jembez brought their own rod. When he swallowed it, Moses said, take note of this, I'm coming back. And he left. After nine plagues, Pharaoh was still hardened. Then the Bible says, yet one more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and the nation of Israel. He says, afterwards, he shall let you go. And he didn't let them go. The Bible says, they were driven to go out. They didn't wait for their dough to rise, to make chinchi. They were in a hurry. They made it anyhow, because a man was tired. May you anoint in weary darkness to let you go. I'm not motivating you. There is an unction a man can carry. No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. Give him two minutes. That madness will rearrange itself until it comes out. Because fire was not designed to fear. The Bible says he maketh his angels winds, no more spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please look up. Someone came to me and said, Every night. There's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room. And I said, it's because that stranger has not seen power. The Bible says no man can enter a man's house and spoil him. What will you first do? Discuss? Suggest? Bind the strong man, he says. And then you spoil his goods. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen i prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen sing it one more time everything that was lost shall be returned unto you Have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it? Are we together? Run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person. Then what does the owner do? He goes to the police station and carries a policeman. Are we together? They hold guns and they enter a van. Then they come and meet the owner after two weeks. And say we are going to kill you power above his power what does he do 
he shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly and he carries it the bible said when you catch a thief if he gives you back what he has stolen he has still cheated you he will restore tenfold that profit must be added in the realm of the spirit when you catch a thief he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone are we together if the breakthrough had come in 2005 by now you would have helped many people so now that it did not come you are not just going to receive it like that if you receive it you did it was not restoration it was just progress continued the capacity to produce change and compel compliance if Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday assuming tomorrow were a working day immediately he speaks all the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary he is using authority not power what he's using is exousia his office as a president to speak but dunamis are the soldiers so they move on the street with cane guns tear gas and uh, black maria what are they doing compelling compliance if they find you roaming around still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy they ask you did you not hear what the president said and then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you god makes the statement the earth is the lord's he's waiting for you to create that compliance are we together now number three we're still defining the anointing what is the anointing the anointing write it down is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in god the empowerment the capacity to manifest the possibilities in god the anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty. His might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we are dwelling. We preach many messages on the anointing, but just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing, broadly speaking. Number one, there is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. It is the anointing that teaches you all things. It is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you. Right? The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no. There is the personal anointing to grow and represent Christ. 1 John 2.20, media please. 1 John 2.20 That's the first dimension of the anointing. Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. 
everyone is entitled read after me please one to read it says but ye have an unction from the holy one and as a result you know all things you have an unction whether you are a preacher whatever you, if you are in christ you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing hallelujah the second dimension of the anointing and trust me i know what i'm saying the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment that is the anointing of your call the anointing of your destiny the anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. So there is an anointing that comes with your call. There is an anointing that comes with your assignment. When God empowers you, he puts an anointing upon your life, an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you. Are we together? There is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One. A demand from those who desire to be recipients of it it responds to faith it responds to desire are we together the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 how that when he was passing the gates beautiful the man was begging for arms and Peter told him look on us and he looked at them expecting to receive and he says silver and gold that expectation provokes the anointing blind Bartimaeus cried thou son of David he provoked the anointing that is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon it doesn't come all the time anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing if it's operational in you all the time it will kill you you do not have the physical capacity your body does not have that stamina 
have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired it lifted that's what jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me when virtue leaves you prophets in ancient times when the anointing landed upon them for their experience when it lifted some of them were sick for days they had to eat herbs to recover from the stream are we together this anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you are we together that's the reason why you can see a man of God you may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage after the meeting you are hugging him slapping him because something has lifted but if by any mistake you're hugging you apply faith to it it will return that's what makes people just they are laughing and the next in the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service are we together so many people were touching Jesus and a woman came he said if I may but touch the hem of his garment Jesus was not even aware but it was automatic the moment there was a demand that anointing that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted the anointing that is given on account of your assignment two scriptures to help us Isaiah 61 please will not read it um, will not project it just write it Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 the spirit of the Lord is upon me upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization so because of that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and with that spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings to bind up the brokenhearted right to set the captives free to open up the doors of prison to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all day that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified the anointing came for that reason Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 to 18 the Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come what is the purpose of the anointing i've said it to us but we must the purpose is is encapsulated in the definition but the purpose of the anointing isaiah 10 27 isaiah 10 27 isaiah 10 27 i like us to read it together it's projected one to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why listen please look up there are yokes there are burdens there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking god's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66, verse 3. Psalm 66, verse 3.
Let's read it, please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar, not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child. Or careless enough to allow anything to happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. Amen. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya for fire. For fire. Lord, we wait. You can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me 
I was not born with it. Are we together? A time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language there is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing it's not about falling down look at me it's not about falling down it's about your spirit station you are not just hearing you are seeing what the lord is saying let me tell you something the difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing there is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing i know it you reign you ancient zion king Kadosh, Kadosh, you, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep. And we God us. You were mighty on the throne. Yeah, yeah. You're mighty in this place. Yeah, Abba Shaba Kataya. Your mighty display Shalom, Shalom, my father, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shaka Tabayada, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Yeah, 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 you're welcome in this place. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself what can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men you are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf what is the key please hear me this is an office I'm not speaking to you as a man I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth but I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The heavens are not the door. 
The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Heaven sent out the gold. He gave the sound of glory. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh. oh, oh. understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what i'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the pa of a man of god and not be born again please hear me that they ordain you does not mean you are born again are you hearing what i'm saying ah i tell you i sense fire in this place that you were ordained they poured oil on you does not mean that you are born again let me tell you we can do what we know to do on earth but it depends on whether God approves of it or not that's what I'm hearing in the spirit John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to God is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine their born again I am telling you this there are many people who are not born again 
are we together and I don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with Jesus Christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic Oh, the power of God is here. All these things we keep doing, we fool ourselves. Nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter. Not suit, not English, not Greek and Hebrew. There must be a track record in the secret place. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. You don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic, you expect things to happen. No, sir. Human beings are not robots. Are we together? Human beings are not idiots. Do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. It says... Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. 
let me tell you something many Christians in our generation we love God we are born again but we are too ashamed of our addiction addiction the same way have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing Indian hemp the person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten he's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for God you don't love him enough Oh, let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power I'm telling you you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are I you know I pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever I know they don't love God they even love me more than God I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man. You know that they love me more than God. You know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it is? All these carnal things that take our time. Please fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time. People get jobs. When they lose jobs, they backslide. What a shame to your passion for God. You are in a relationship. Someone says, I will marry you. All of a sudden, he says, I'm not doing. And you leave God. God, I'm angry. Jesus told the disciples, he said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? Where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand and we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer no how many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies very little I can tell you this many pastors fast some of you are like that probably you came from somewhere you are sitting boiling waiting for the time of impartation and God is saying calm down not so so that you will not go back disappointed God is not a herbalist there is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity. Outspoken Christianity. Not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that, 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 that will fall your hand. If God falls your hand, you are fallen. I tell you. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, the psalmist said. I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God. Forever you will be. Forever you will be. The lamb upon the throne. The lamb upon the throne. And I gladly bow my To you MOG it's time to seek God more than ministry your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God you have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons and you you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule I can cancel any ministration for my secret place you know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Aquaibon. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. 
don't think because you are always talking it means God is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up I want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the Holy Ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the Holy Ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the Holy Spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop Mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been hijacked by Satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly no God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism I understand and I respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of Pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the bible says it came and filled the room and then the bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the holy ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the eleventh one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men he said you are behaving like those who have taken this thing are we together now and then in Acts chapter 3 still well Acts chapter 2 when Peter finished preaching to them the Bible says they were caught to the heart and this is what they said men and brethren what shall we do and then he says repent for the remission of your sins and then he says you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed 
and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of john then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay now the bible says give us from verse 24 let's start from 24 listen to this story a certain jew named who apollos and the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance like many people in churches like many pastors they are zealous they love god but the scope of the understanding of god is the baptism of john let's see what happened one day he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual he says and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue they were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly let's see what he did as a result next verse and when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says, who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses, he was eloquent. Sorry. But now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just gist again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again the internet is full of messages there are all kinds of men of god with perspectives all across africa all across the world messages are now free what the world needs is a demonstration of power romans chapter 8 please verse 19 
Romans chapter 8 For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are There is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20 8 verse 19 8 verse 19 uh, thank you NLT for creation is what eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are because the Bible says it does not yet appear they are still looking at us and they think we are like them. But there is an activity happening in us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation. There is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church. He said, My little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done, let me tell you, he will produce a wonder in our lives. First Corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray. First Corinthians 2 verse 7. He says, talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit. He said, no, please give it to us. Um, okay no problem no problem let's just sleep again it says no the wisdom we speak it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom god put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter. <laughs> and nobody laughs at you. It's intelligent. In fact, people accuse you for not laughing. Who taught you how to laugh? The same way your cry, as sarcastic as it looks, it compels compassion. Tongues is also like that. Don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues. When you slap a baby, Shade, when you gave birth to your child, and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen i want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. 
it was Paul himself that said I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye hallelujah Luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first Thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing it doesn't mean pray from morning till night you'll be an irresponsible person it means pray consistently the Bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall never go down day or night let me tell you something whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life it's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life it's cheaper as bad as it is for your health to be attacked than your prayer life and let me tell you how Satan attacks you he makes you to resent everybody that can help you you fight and quarrel them and push them when you are alone then he attacks you Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness through anger through fault finding so everybody that can help you and intercede for you he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you listen listen excessive solitude i'm not talking of just retreating to pray when there is a desire in you to not hear people to not listen you are in a world of your own it's a sign that darkness is close to you it's a strategy for your destruction the last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation the mystery of impartation transference of grace transference of unction transference of power numbers chapter 27 we'll just look at one example so that we pray let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua a classic sign of biblical impartation numbers 27 verse 18 to 23 numbers chapter 27 please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart this was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry are we together are you ready let's read one to read and the Lord said unto Moses take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit and do what lay your hands upon him that what should happen next verse and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight are we together and he says and thou shalt put some of thine honor can you show me where honor is in a man God said don't just through impartation transfer your spirit transfer your honor I told you honor is not something you fight for it's a mantle that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient there is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace it's not by shouting and saying obey me there is a mantle And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him and so on and so forth and so on and so forth now let's see what happened Deuteronomy chapter 3 chapter 34 verse 9 just one scripture Deuteronomy 34 is still a continuation of this story Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 let's read together one two read uh -huh. was full of the spirit of wisdom why for Moses had what laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him listen you know why people don't listen to you because you are trying to do ministry using seniority you are trying to do ministry saying don't disrespect me there is an unction that compels loyalty men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach they will clap for you when you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death 
brothers and sisters there is a mystery upon his head I can tell you Koinonia has that mystery hmm. you see ba there are secrets in this kingdom there are secrets in this kingdom the one you can find is the one you will live by the one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever God said I want to honor Joshua but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it he said Moses it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him listen you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and reap. you can trace an anointing and know where it came from are we together you can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benihin. this one you can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams this one did not just come from this you can see a prosperity mantle and trace it anointings are like address they can show you where they came from I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence. An evidence. There are different kinds of anointings. There is the power to prosper. Shout it. Say the power to prosper. I want you to shout it like you mean it. Say the power to prosper. The power to prosper. This is what many people need to pray for. I'm not against business ideas. I teach you principles. There's financial dominion. But I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go and you will see a donkey, a coat. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program and he said take it that's the grace that will make somebody say take my car and be using it for this crusade there is such a grace let me tell you something how you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything if you pay for everything the power to prosper is not it's not about being a millionaire the power to prosper is not about being a millionaire it's about the supernatural speaking in your life. Men are rising to help you when there is trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you, I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this. By the grace of God, this is how this ministry came. The power to prosper. Listen, please, I don't know how, I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think i am saying the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what i'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel are we together the pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest when you see a man a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment there is power to prosper there that's what god wanted to give us but pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe and you sit down and pray for hours you don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe 
you just need to offer value and it will come this is this is not about getting money for sure the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say i need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you'll find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is with us then what can stop us help me Of the power to prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the bible says david was in the cave of adulam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader after over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give god the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give god the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give God the glory but when you sit down and watch God God will say son I want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we we're coming back from Ekiti and when we're coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere i could not sleep the lord said i should bless you power to prosper 
someone says from today until December I will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you will sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces I trust God to release tonight is the power to prosper I'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about Ebenezer the helper of Zion are we together If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Are we together? There are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage. The economy of Nigeria has become so fierce. If you don't have the power to prosper, you will suffer. You can get a job after laboring for years in the university. You get a job and someone just says, where are you from? And you say I'm Yeruba. He says you are not Hausa. Leave the job. It just brings in sentiment to cancel your five, six, seven years of labor. That's the world we live in now. Are we together? Are you my brother? Are you a Christian or otherwise? Are you this? Are you from the same village? Not what do you have to give? In that world of wickedness, you want to move forward? You want to plant a church i was not born in zaria i'm not from kaduna state you don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper there is loyalty that comes with territory are we together that's why jesus told the people start from jerusalem but when you go to a foreign territory brothers and sisters you need the power to prosper that's what our fathers have used and they have opened branches of their ministries in uk in france Huh? someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in France and people would rather stay there and redeem MFM is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where I was I was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria but now she's in France she was in Holland God used us, you know, and then it was a miracle for her. After many years, she had a child and she went to different churches. The Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children. They didn't collect tithes and they were not dedicating children because the government would sanction it. And I told her, I said, uh-uh, you mean there's no church around? And she said, the only living church in this area is redeemed. I said, redeemed again. Redeemed again. How did you get there now? And the pastor there is a Yoruba person. Come on now. Power to prosper. You enter a land and become indomitable. A firm grasp of territories. Not intimidated by any government. They will come and go. The mystery keeps you there. Now they are downsizing workers. Between now and December, a lot will happen. I've told us, I told us at 1st of January, this thing will not go well in terms of the economy i'm not a prophet of doom but i told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why god said this are year of multiplied grace and influence isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better nigeria this year i tell you the truth under god you are joking i love nigeria are we together i'm a very loyal citizen of this nation but this is prophecy it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give god glory you say no i know the school fees of my children before i will go to pay it someone has paid it 
and he will never tell you who he is write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor Tunde Bakare and told him he said I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said I'm okay and the man said no I had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three i'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two hmm. are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life isaiah 32 verse 15 we're praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your turn as we are changed spirit have your way in us today spirit take as we are spirit have your way Ezekiel 
chapter 37 there is an anointing that can restore I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit listen and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? bones no structure this power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable believe me verse 2 verse 2 and cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what? very dry listen you will step into the life of people with age long issues the devil has stolen from them it's not just that the situation is dead it was stolen then son of man verse 3 he says can these bones live and he says only thou knowest verse 4 this is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones who speaks to bones dogs eat bones men throw bones God speaks to bones he says hear ye the word of the Lord and then let's read verse 5 and behold I will cause breath to enter you go to verse 7 so I prophesied not as I wanted as I was commanded and there was what a noise the same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 there was a sound and behold a shaking and the Bible says and behold bones came together this is not just resurrection this is restoration are we together we are going to pray hold hands together in the next five minutes I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power lift your voice and pray pray like a man like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function grace
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life. That will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. The power to fly. Please lift your hands. Listen, it is not about falling down. Don't be distracted with falling down. Open your spirit and receive something that will change your life. Don't just focus on falling down. The Holy Ghost is doing his thing. But beyond falling down, open up your heart to receive. Children, adults, don't say no. Some people cannot receive. You have a child, stand for them. Don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry of and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one two three take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shaka Baba Katana Baba inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. The ministry of man making your life easy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Take the power to prosper. 
take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper by this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive talita kumi come alive talita kumi dead academics dead relationships Bible says and I will restore to you the years that the canker worm if you have not lost anything in your life you don't need to pray this prayer if you have not lost anything don't lift your hands don't worry but if you are among those who need true restoration you have wasted years time has passed opportunities pass and you need a rapid response listen the bible says they are taken for a prey 
and none say it restore there is a man who can call forth restoration there is an unction that will restore to you lift your hands not only will God restore he will give you grace to be an agent of restoration therefore right now I pray that unction for restoration according to Ezekiel 37 that sound that wind right now may that sound come upon your life take it now take it now take it now take it now go and restore your family take it now go and restore the fortunes that has been lost take it now go back experience academic restoration now now academic restoration jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class go back and get a job whatever made you lose your job a new job comes by this anointing take it now where you would have been promoted but sentiments kept you not only will you be promoted it must be backdated in the name of Jesus listen you will hear strange testimonies from today's service you will hear men who will come and tell you promotion of 10 years was compressed together and brought there is an anointing for it There are some of you, you would have been richer than the way you are now. You would have been better than the way you are now. But witchcraft kept you. I prophesy to you. I'm not asking you to move forward. I'm asking you to move to where you would have been. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you were supposed to have been married... And the devil delayed it. And now you are marrying carry twins. Carry twins. Carry twins. Carry triplets. Carry twins. Carry triplets. I pray for every church here. And every ministry. That should have grown. But you are still stagnated. Between now and December, triple your number. Triple your number. I speak it prophetically. Triple your number. For the sake of the kingdom. I pray for you. Any helper who would have appeared in your life by now. Even if, let me tell you something. There is a way your helper can come too late. That what he was supposed to do has destroyed you already. But I'm praying for you. Where one helper should have come, I call three to come. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Koinonia be believers. I said, where one helper should have come, I call three to appear at the same time. They should appear at the same time. Hallelujah. That happened to Saul, the son of Kish. For three days delay, there were three sets of miracles. One, your father's donkey has been found. Two, you will be on your way going. You will meet three men carrying bread. Two of them will give you. Number three, you will come to the garrison of Philistines. Where there are prophets, you will prophesy like them. All in one day, I pray it again. In the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God the king of kings and the lord of lords the doer of miracles the one who can change any man's life if I be a man of God and there is God that backs this ministry I say it again where one helper would have come I call three to come into your life Hallelujah. One last prayer. 
Moses lay your hand upon Joshua that the spirit will come upon him he said transfer some of your honor to him I want to pray a dangerous prayer for you lift your hands many of you may not understand what I'm about to pray for you but you watch and see what will happen in your life honor is a mantle no man can you don't lobby for it it's not a political position hallelujah he says I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places I want to pray for you if I tell you I've not seen this grace in my life I'm lying it's a grace it's not just business acumen there is an anointing I want you to receive this prayer it will make your life easy where men arise where God opens your eyes many are looking but you see I pray for you father Lord God it is always your desire it is always help that lady please your desire that any grace you give a man be distributed to people it is never your desire to have one man just stand you use one man to receive but it is for the people this honor that you have released upon my life is not just for me it cannot be just for me I pray in the name of Jesus I invoke the covenant I have with you in the secret place and I pray from what you told me in the secret that as I speak you will confirm it right now oh God like a mantle let this honor fall on as many people as desire take it right now take it right now strange honor take it right now strange results take it right now inside and outside online take it right now strange results strange results strange results strange results before you knock may the gate open before you knock may the gate open I lose the loins of kings I lose the loins of kings I lose the loins of kings for your sake I lose the loins of kings for your sake listen the Bible says I will open before you the two lift gates he said they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles he says you will suck the breast of kings and in their glory shall you boast yourself where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you he says I make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations koinonia as a mantle let this be the signature that many will use to know you are a member of this ministry honor honor uncommon honor those outside make sure you are receiving it honor receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting our time is spent but except for those under the anointing I'd like us to all stand in one minute those under the anointing just leave them so they don't fall back again hallelujah those online those listening please hear me there are two kinds of altar calls that will be made today I will merge them in one number one there are those who have never truly committed their lives to Jesus if you are part of them before I finish you can even come listen there are people here you see God is not a herbalist brothers and sisters 
I told you his desire is for his love to be revealed. You have seen the mighty acts of God here today. But there are people inside in the first overflow all around and many, the thousands following us online. There are so many people who are yet to surrender. I told you the first key to access the anointing is genuine surrender. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are here in this category, you know that if the trumpet will sound today, you are not heaven bound. Or number two, you know at a point you gave your life to Jesus Christ, but because of the vicissitudes of life, the pressure of life was upon you and you know right now you are not in right standing with God. Please, our time is gone. We have two minutes to do this. Wherever you are, all the overflows outside. I don't care whether you came with a friend or you came as a family. Jesus is calling you right now. Wherever you are, please run to the front. Come and stand here. God bless you. God bless you. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Those outside, clear the way for them. This is the beginning of a life of victory. It's not compulsory. No man will force you. But let me tell you the truth. You will be doing yourself a misdeed. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Coin on your clap for them. Make your way to the front. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. It's time to be serious with God. No one leg in, one leg out. Make your way to the front. I don't care whether you're a pastor, you're a prophet. Once you know your ways are not right with the Lord Jesus Christ, make your way to the front. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. We're not interested in your face. We're interested in your destiny. There is nothing you have done that is too great or is too big for you to be forgiven. Make your way to the front. Don't let any man condemn you. The devil is a liar. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. I don't want to know. Jesus is ready to save you. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. The Holy Ghost is still speaking to people. You must be born again, Jesus said. It's compulsory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for all of us who came out. Some of us have given our lives to Jesus Christ. Some of us are rededicating our lives properly. Some of us, you have been coming out for several altar calls. You may not know what you have been doing. But today is the day you want to make up your mind. Please lift your hands to heaven. High to the heavens. You are not lifting it to a man. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Please mean it from your heart. You are not reciting a poem. Jesus is right in this place. Lord Jesus. I truly love you. And I believe in you. I believe with all my heart that you died for me you were buried for me you rose again for my justification I declare that you are my savior you are my lord I denounce sin and Satan from today I receive eternal life into my spirit I am a child of God I am born again my name is in the Lamb's book of life. I receive grace to become effective. I am planted in the house of God. And I flourish as a believer. Keep your hands lifted. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of great days in your life. Let this be the beginning of a new level in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you with the blessings of the kingdom. I bless you with the blessings of this family. Your, the lines are fallen for you in pleasant places. And you have a goodly heritage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you for this great decision. Please, I'd like you to follow the person waving. Where are you? Wave your hands. The lady waving her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them. They will get your details and I promise you will follow you up. God bless you. Koinonia, honor them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.